My brother, what's your name, bro? What's the name? I can't hear. Edward. Edward. Hey, my name is Amon, man. Come closer. Nice to meet you, bro. Nice to meet you too, man. I see he was out there uh, talking to you a little bit. You got any questions? No, no, I was just telling him I got a friend that, that's uh, from Palestine. We from Palestine. He, he, uh, he, he, uh, dude, he did. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so you're saying your friend knew he was an Israelite? Yeah. He knows Do you know you're an Israelite? Yeah. I mean, he talked to us about it all the time, but, you know. Okay. Uh, what part of that that got you skeptical? None of it really. I just ain't really just really dove into it like you know, like okay. you gentlemen do. I just ain't really got into it like that. Well, let me ask you a question. Do you believe the Bible? Yeah. Every word of it, or just some of it? Nothing to me. All right. Well, let's 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 get a foundation, okay? What part of it is skeptical to you? Let's see if we can clear that up for you, because that's what we all here for. We all here for. I mean, well, I got it cleared. I mean, I just say I, I got a lot of questions about the Bible, but you know, it's just okay. Well, let me start for you, okay? The first time you went to Sunday school, how old was you? That you can remember? About six or seven, right? Okay, me, me too, you know what I'm saying? In Sunday school, what did they teach us about Noah and the ark? How did he take the animals on the bus? I mean, on the boat? They told us two by two, right? So now what I'm about to show you is how we've been indoctrinated ever since we was old enough to go to school, uh, old enough to learn something, right? Because they teach you opposite of what the Bible says. Now we're going to read the Bible and see what it says, okay? Read verse 1. Genesis chapter 7 and verse 1. And the Lord said unto Noah. Who is, no, who is the Lord speaking to? And the Lord said unto Noah. Read. Come thou in all thy house into the ark. So the Most High God told Noah and his house, that means his family, right? To come into the ark. You with me? Stay with me. Read verse 2. Verse 2. Of every clean beast thou shalt take to thee by seven. By how many? By seven. What did they teach us in church? By twos, right? But the Bible clearly says by how many? By seven. So if the Bible says by sevens and we was taught twos, something wrong with that picture, right? Now, I'm going to ask you this question. Do you see your uh, nationality on this side? What race of people do you come from? <laughs> Give me Genesis 49. I'm, I'm going to start from the beginning, bro. On this side of the line is what the Bible calls us. On this side of the line is what they call us over here in America. And each one of these words means slave or servant. You with me? Give me 49 and uh, verse 1. Watch this, my brother. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 1. And Jacob called unto his son. Now, little Bible history. Do you know who Jacob is? Who is Jacob? your memory. Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel, right? So read it again. And Jacob called unto his son and said, gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last day. So God is telling through Jacob, he going to tell his 12 sons where they going to be at in the last days, okay? So to keep that in mind, go to uh, Exodus chapter 2. I mean, Exodus chapter 1 and read verse 2. What, 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 uh, what's your name, sis? Ashley. Ashley. And what's your name, little sis? Ashley. Okay, do y'all know we up here teaching, thus saith the Lord, your nationality is written in the Bible. This is not a religious book, this is a history book. But you look like you got to go somewhere, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hang on for a minute. I'm a, let's, go, let's, get the, uh, let's get the true image of Christ first. Can I ask you, sis? My, my man, you can answer too. What was we? Which one of these pictures was we taught was Christ? We were always taught the white side. The, the white one, right? But right. I never Would believed that. Because I had an uncle that was now, always on this side. Now watch this. Remember I told you that uh, they've been uh, doctrinating us ever yeah. since we could go to school. Ever since we was her age, right? Yeah. So the Bible says that Noah took them on by seven, right? Let's see what the Bible say Jesus looked like. You ever played baseball? You ever played baseball, sis? Kickball? Anything that played three strikes and you out? Well, we about to play it right now. Read what you got. One and one. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 1. You know, we in the New Testament now. Read. The revelation of Jesus Christ. The revealing of Jesus Christ. Read. Which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Read. And he, I'm sorry. Verse 14. 
His head and his hairs were white like wool. All right, sis, you're up, my brother. Which one of these pictures has hair white like wool? White is a color and wool is a texture. Which one? So this one got white woolly hair, right? So that's strike one against the, this image, correct? Read. As white as snow and his feet, excuse me, and his eyes were as a flame of fire and his feet like unto fine brass. Now, his eyes was as a flame of fire. Do y'all know what Jesus Christ's first miracle was? He turned water into wine at a wedding. Y'all heard that before, right? So Jesus Christ drunk wine in moderation. When us people, like you got an uncle or something like that, that drink wine, check this out. After you have a little sip or two, don't you white of your eyes turn bloodshot? That's red, right? Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you that, that that's prophesied in the Bible from the beginning that Jesus would come with red eyes. Genesis 49 and 12, read what you got. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine read. and his teeth white with milk. So his eyes shall be red with wine. That was prophesied by Moses in the beginning. Here we are in the end and the prophecy came true. With me, 15. Verse 15, and his feet like unto fine bread. Now both of y'all got on sandals. The top of your feet, is the same color as the rest of your body. We agree? Read. As if they burned in a furnace. So what color is brass? Right here. A derivative of brass. That's brass burned in a furnace. Right. So Christ is discovered, uh, described as a what? A dark-skinned man, right? A so-called black man. So that's three strikes for this image, right? So if they lied about that, what else they done lied about? If they lied about the color of our Lord, then that means they lied about who his people is. Sure. You heard of Jewish? The word ish means pertaining to. Who are they pretending to be? They pretending to be the people on this side. That's right. And the Bible documents that. Come closer, sis. Come closer, my man. Let, let me show you something. What's, what's this image right here? Of what? Of slavery, right? Now I want you to look right here, sis. Did y'all know this was documented in the Bible? I'm about to get it for you. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, read verse 1. This right here, these people on this side would be in this condition. That's whose history? That's our history, right? So the Bible is a, and look, look at these pictures right here. Now watch this. I'm going to show you these in the Bible. Deuteronomy 28 and 1. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. And it shall come to pass. This is a future prophecy for the Israelites. Read. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Now this is a promise also. God said if you hearken diligently. Read. To observe and to do all his commandments. Read. Which I command thee this day. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations. God said, if you repent today and keep the commandments, he's going to set you on high above all nations, right? Let's get the flip side. 15. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, what? That all these curses, shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, I'm going to ask both of y'all, is a curse a good thing or a bad thing? God said to you today, if you don't keep his commandments, all these curses would come on you, right? So let's see if this happened to the so-called white man, Jewish man, or did it happen to the so-called Negro, right? Give me 16. Verse 16. Cursed shall thou be in the city. And cursed shall thou be in the field. What city are we in right now? This is Dallas, right? Look around. You got crime. You got trash. Rats don't even live in trash. That is a curse. In every city in America, in the ghettos, where do you, who do you find there? God's people, the Israelites. Read 46 real quick. Verse 46. 
and they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. God said through Moses, these curses gonna be on his chosen people for a sign. How do you know you at Oprah's beauty supply house? Because of the sign, right? So these signs are gonna be on God's chosen people so they'll know who they are at the end time, which is now, right? Let's get some more signs, give me 17. Verse 17, cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Verse 16, cursed shall thou be in the city, and cursed shall thou be in the field. Back in slavery, we was cursed in the field. Sugar cane, cotton. If we didn't pull enough rubber, they cut our hands off. Right. That's a curse. And that only happened to who? Did it happen to black people? My pants is black. I can't catch an airplane to a place called black. It happened to who? Read Deuteronomy 28 and 1 again. Deuteronomy chapter 1 and verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Spake to who? Unto all Israel. Moses spoke these words to Israel. He said, "If you, these curses going to be on you for a sign. Back then, it was in the field. Today, it's in the job field. Right. You got a job? Where you work at, sir? You back there where? Wyndham. Who owns that hotel? Mr. Wendell. <laughs> so guess what? You in his field. He pay your check, right? That's that's cursed in the field. You know what I'm saying? We got we got uh, people that went to college four years to be doctors and come out being truck drivers. That's a curse because it's, we the first ones fired, last ones hired, right? Do you agree, sir? So. Do y'all understand how we the Israelites according to the Bible? Okay. So, if you understand, give me. All right, before you go, I want you to listen to this. Now that you know you Israel, right? You too, sis. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter ten and verse twelve. And now Israel. Now that y'all know y'all Israelite, what does the Lord thy God require of thee? It's a requirement. You can't run around here talking about, I'm an Israelite, I'm an Israelite, and don't do nothing. Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. How do you fear the Lord thy God? You know? Read. To walk in all his ways. Read. And to love him. And to serve the Lord thy God uh -huh. with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Here's the point. Read. To keep the commandments of the Lord. To keep God's commandments, right? One commandment that you're breaking right now. Give me Leviticus 26 and 1. What's around your wrist? A piece of jewelry, right? But what does that jewelry represent? That's right. So, so you know that's idolatry, correct? Watch this, what God say, a commandment that you got to start keeping now that you know you're Israelite. Read. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 1. Ye shall make you no idol, nor a graven image, neither shall ye re Neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall you set up any image of stone in your land. So in other words, bro, if you know you're an Israelite and you want to keep God's commandments, the way to repent is to take that off and throw it away. Right. The chain and stuff is fine, but the idolatry part got to go. You understand that? So, bro, another thing, yeah. Zephaniah 2 and 1. Another thing that you got to do, bro, in your repentance. Because repentance is a process. Yeah. You ain't going to start keeping all 613 commandments in one day. You got to know what they are, right? Read what you got. Zephaniah chapter 2 and verse 1. Here you go. Gather yourselves together. Yea, gather together, O nation, not desired. We the nation that's undesired. That's why we getting killed in the streets. You know why? Because we don't gather ourselves together to learn God's law. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed but at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.